Hi everyone, welcome back. This week I'm going to talk about something that I have been kind of like investigating, I guess is the best way to put it, um, for a couple months I would say because I had some kind of, uh, I guess, intuitive calls to investigate it because something like patterns were coming up for me and I, so I dug deeper as I usually do and it's around the eclipse energy and this kind of came about like you know we hear about the eclipses all the time but why did it all of a sudden become an important thing in my life was it started when I started going down the path of um, hearing about the starseed hotline through Molly McCord and understanding that Lavendar had, um, as you guys know, I've talked about her in the past, is um, she's the uh, person that was able to intuit the different degree points in our natal charts that help us to understand if we are of the frequency of the Palladians. And it's not just the Palladian energy. It's uh, she. They describe it as a whole, I think it's 33 different species. Uh, and you kind of like carry the antenna to understand them. And they talk about this thing called a Palladian lineup. And the Palladian lineup happens twice a year. And it's um, May 15th through the 18th. And also, which is the reason of that point, and the next one is November 16th through the 20th, is because in the May one, the sun is at... 25 to 27 degrees of Scorpio, which that window is the kind of gateway or portal to this Palladian energy. And then in November, the sun is at 25 to 27 degrees of Taurus, which is another point on your natal chart if you carry these um, energies is an indication that you're communicating and able to communicate with these energies. Now, the Palladian lineup happens at those two times of the year, but when you get a, a reading with this um, starseed energy, they'll look in your chart to see, do you have any degree points from 27, or 25 to 27 degrees anywhere in your chart? So for me, I have Mars in Gemini at 26 um, point, well, 26 minutes, the 26 degree and the 54 minutes, but it's retrograde in Mars, and that's communication and higher learning. And for me, the retrograde part I bring in because retrograde is usually meaning that it's inside. It's something that you're cultivating inside. This communication and higher learning is something that is not an external always expression. It's first you you un, you dig inward to then express outward. So. I, you know, I was really interested in the fact, okay, I have one of these degree points. Okay, that's interesting, but then what does it mean? So knowing that we have an eclipse coming up that falls at exactly the point of this Palladian lineup, that made me very curious and made me really want to understand what's going on here. <laughs> so I'm going to first just read really quickly what an eclipse is. So Eclipses are dynamic cosmic occurrences that activate the lunar nodes. And simply put, the moon glides over the elliptical that is, in con that is constantly rotating around the zodiac. The highest and lo lowest points of this orbit correspond with the lunar nodes, which appear in our birth charts as the south and north node. The south and north nodes, often referred to as the nodes of fate, symbolize our past, which is the south node, and the future, which is the north node, and our karmic pathway. According to eclipses, activating these nodes within our birth charts and illuminating our destiny. So the difference between the solar and the lunar eclipse is there are two types of eclipses, a solar and a lunar. Solar eclipses occur at the new moon phase when the sun and the moon are positioned at the exact same degree within the same zodiac sign. In this configuration, the moon passes between the sun and the earth, temporarily obscuring the sun. If this occurs during daylight, as it did in August 2017, it will result in a breathtaking um, moment for several moments, and then the sun will completely obscure the, the moon's silhouette. 
In a lunar eclipse, on the other hand, it corresponds to the full moon phase. But unlike the normal full moon that reflects the sun's illumination, during a lunar eclipse, the moon um, emanates the Earth's shadow known as the umbra. And the Earth perfectly wedges between the sun and the moon, and the moon excludes a tawny red tone, and this distinctive hue is why it is often referred to as a blood moon. Lunar and solar eclipses also signify different types of shifts in astrology. So that's what the basics of the eclipses are. And I will link below the article that I got that from. So knowing that these are points of reference and what I'm understanding them as now is portals of energy that are able to bring through uh, extreme, um, for me, it feels like, connection and downloads to why you're here and it's either helping clean out energy or it's helping to bring energy in to help you move through to the next phases of your contract or your mission here so then I got really curious and I was like okay well how what how is this playing out in my life <laughs> but um I looked back at the one that happened in May because that was my, I didn't know about this Palladian lineup back then. And I was like, well, just like, let's see, what was I doing those dates in May? So I, the dates were the 15th through the 19th. And in those dates, nothing appeared out of the ordinary <laughs> except for my first um, experience our ceremony with my local shaman doing ayahuasca happened on the 20 May 21st and 22nd and they say that the energy of the eclipses the, and also I want to just say that was a, a lunar eclipse but the energies of the eclipses are it's almost like a period so for in the case of the lunar eclipse it will start at the new moon of that um, lunation and it will carry through the lunar eclipse so when I look back at that time, you know, obviously the 21st and 22nd of that month, I was still in that, that portal. And at that ayahuasca ceremony, I got so many downloads. It was, I remember it being so intense and I have, so wait, that, um, that lunar eclipse was at five degrees of Sag. So I have many planets in Sag. Um, I have my Neptune at 11 degrees, my sun at 12 degrees, and my Mercury is at six degrees. And it's in my third house. So there's a lot of energy and also a big part of who I am in that third house of Sagittarius. And so the fact that these eclipses over the last, since 20... 20 they started in june of 2020 have hit my points in sag over and over and over again it's been a big couple years for me which is not a surprise when i look back and see this right it's something that i'm like okay this all makes sense <laughs> so um the lunar eclipse back in the may of may 20 um it was on okay wait so in back to May, first I looked at the Palladian lineup, which would have been the 15th through the 19th, okay? Then the next thing was I had that ceremony on the 21st, but the lunar eclipse didn't happen that month until the 26th at 5 degrees of Sag. So it wasn't completely lined up with the Palladian lineup of where that portal, it was almost like the portal happened the week before the lunar eclipse. So they were not, and, and my ceremony fell right in the middle of it. So it wasn't like 100% lined up together, but still such powerful energy, right? Um, so then I was like, I'm going to look back. I'm going to look back to when these Sag eclipses started and just see what did I have in my calendar on those dates. So I went back to the first one, which was June 5th, 2020, and that was another lunar eclipse in Sag at 15 degrees, which as you guys know, that hits right at my close to my mercury and i looked and sure enough that was the week that i was in mount shasta and which i didn't know at the time it marked the one year anniversary of my awakening and i didn't know because obviously i wasn't didn't put it as an anniversary in my calendar but i i remember being on that um that hike with the man that we met there and we were just talking and he said he was asking like so what brings you here this right now and I was like 
actually, I don't know. And he's like, when did you, when did you awaken? And then I was like looking at my calendar and I was like, oh my God, exactly a year ago today. And he said, that doesn't surprise me. So now when I look back and I see, oh, okay, there was also a lunar eclipse in Sag happening that exact time. It's like everything kind of aligned to bring me to Mount Shasta at that time. And it's funny if I think I might've talked about this in that episode about Mount Shasta we weren't planning to go that week. We were planning, I think, to do it a few weeks earlier, but something came up with my friend and we had to push it out. So again, everything lines up exactly how it is supposed to. So that was a huge activation for me. And then the next one fell on December 14th, 2020. And that one was a a solar eclipse in Sag at 23 degrees. And as you guys probably will remember, that is when I became a walk-in. And I have some, I've gotten some more information about this um, walk-in status. (laughs) It's actually not the date that I became a walk-in, but it is the date that I got an activation of being a walk-in. So in my reading with Debbie Solaris, one of the things that we talked about, because I told her I already know I'm a walk-in, so, you know, but when, as she went into it, it actually happened when I did try to commit suicide back when I was 19. And it actually corresponded with, I changed my name right at that time as well. So what happens in a walk-in situation a lot of times is you have, everything changes. There's, there's energies that have come into your system and whatever doesn't feel right in the in the with the new soul coming in, it will alter it. And even in this case, it was slight, right? Like, um, obviously, I went through the period of healing from that suicide attempt because the soul has to work out the the karma and the things that the the old soul leaves behind. But I changed my name because I knew it, something doesn't feel right here, and I changed it. So. In the case of this reading with Debbie, she explained to me, look, just because it happened back in when you were 19, it just wasn't ready to activate until December of 2020. So it was always there. It just wasn't like woken up yet. So on that solar eclipse back in 2020 of December, that's when it activated. So then I I was like, and, and again, this was at 23 degrees of Sag, which I don't have planets at, but they're very close to my three that are there. So again, that's a powerful thing, but not not direct, right? It's not a direct hit. So then I talked about the one that happened next, which was in May, May 26th of 2021. And again, that was my first ceremony with my local shaman, which even finding her has been such a blessing for me because I'm able to continue this work and digging in deeper to the things that I need to work through and to expand my consciousness to. And to have someone that literally is five minutes away from me has been like the the biggest gift that I've received in this whole journey. So then the next one that's happening in Sag is happening on this coming up December 4th, 2021. Now, this is happening at 12 degrees of Sag, which is exactly where my Neptune and my sun are. And so I knew, okay, this is what this is why this is all coming together. So I had my reading with um, the Starseed Hotline. It was the stage two reading. And really, that's all I wanted to know. Is this a big activation point for me? Because it's clearly falling at exactly that degree. Like, would I imagine the eclipses leading up to the the... the the big bang one is that it's preparing you. It's bringing you in slowly so that you can handle the energies of the final one. So that's what we spoke about. And she did my solar return chart to see like what exactly is going to be, where is it exactly going to be at that point in your chart? And it turns out my solar return is on December 4th and it's at 3.55 a.m., and is at 12 degrees of Sag. So not only is it my solar return, and they believe that the solar return opens up a window of 10 hours of power, they call it. So this this solar eclipse is falling on the exact point, the exact degree of my sun and my Neptune um, at exactly my solar return. 
So holy shit, I'm like, <laughs> it's a big one. And then I started to like tune into what, what, what do I do? What, I mean, clearly it, it's in the morning, like I'll be sleeping, but you know, and then of course I got the message, it's time for to, to book a ceremony. And, you know, when I, when this came in, I, I thought the last one that I did was back in September and I felt complete and I always feel complete after I do ceremonies. So it's not like I'm like ready to jump into another one, but I knew, yeah, that, that feels like it, it'll help whatever the energies are that are meant to come through. It's a huge activation point for me and I think I'm ready. So I obviously emailed my shaman to see if she even was available for a private session and she is and you know it all lined up perfectly and I feel like the reason that I'm talking about this is not necessarily to tell you guys what I'm going through but what I want you to understand is these eclipse points are portals of energy that are made to help activate and move things forward in your journey and sometimes that means letting stuff go so that you can move forward. And sometimes it means getting a huge boost of power to move to the next level. And the the kind of turbulation before these points can be building up until you get to that release point. So then that's all about the Sag eclipses. But then I went, was like curious and I was like, well, what about this one coming in November? Because I know it's the Palladian lineup and it's lining up exactly on the day of the lineup, November 19th. Now I have, I told you guys, the 27th degree of, um, in, of my Mars planet in Gemini, but I also have 27 degrees, the, the cusp of 27 degrees um, of Taurus and the cusp of Scorpio is at the 27 degree point. So again, I'm thinking this is a big lunar eclipse for me. And also they say that when you have your south node and your north node on the access point of that eclipse. So in, in the case of all of the Sagittarian ones, it would have be having your south node or your north node in Sag or, or Gemini, because they're on an access point. And in the case of the one coming, it's the first one that's starting the access point of Scorpio and Taurus. And sure enough, my south node is Taurus and my north node is Scorpio. And they are on the cut. Like I said, like my cut house cusps are at that degree point of 27 degrees because the one on November 19th is the 27th degree of Taurus. So again, I'm like, okay, something's coming through here. And I, so then I look, what am I doing? <laughs> Cause so I, it's funny because Molly McCord started putting out, uh, I think she's done like three episodes already about this eclipse because even though she's not really going deep on why it's important in terms of the Palladian lineup, it's a, it's a super impactful, potent eclipse. So she talks about how, again, it starts on the, the November 4th, which is the new moon of that lun lunation. And that day happens to be my mom's 65th birthday, and we will be in Maui. So obviously, that's amazing energy. It's where the energy of the Mu people are, which I deeply believe I am part of the Mu energy. So in a way, that was enough. Like, I felt like I'm being called home to experience that, the energy. And I've been to Maui many times and I always have felt that even before I awoken because I haven't been back there since I had my awakening. But then I, I was having this feeling of there's another reason. I know there has to be another reason of why I'm being called there. And then I told you guys, it was brought to my attention a few weeks ago that Mateus is going to be there, Mateus de Stefano. So um, I got all of us tickets to go and see the lecture that he's giving on the 6th of November. And again, I don't, I feel like, it's so funny, <laughs> but I don't feel like I'm supposed to have a conversation with him. I feel like I just, our energies need to meet in the same space at the same time for some reason. And I, when I spoke with Debbie Solaris, I had a conversation with her about it as well. And I said, I just have this feeling that we're meeting in Mu for our, something to happen with an energy exchange. And she brought up, yeah, you know, he is more Atlantean for sure, but he's meeting you on your, your home ground. So there is some kind of energetic exchange. And, and what's even weirder is that 
Matthias didn't, he had put like one post about this thing he's doing um, in Maui, but it's not like he's selling tickets for it. There, it, it was, it's free. It's literally like was a f- first come if you can get in. And I, yeah, I was like, I mean, obviously this is why I'm being called to Maui right now. So that L lined up just perfectly. And I feel like, again, it's this energy of the eclipses that are pulling the, these lineups to happen. So what I would say for you guys, like obviously Molly McCord is a huge um, person that talks so much and goes into the astrology behind these eclipses. But then you have to look back at your natal chart and look at what house is this activating for you? What part of your chart, what part of what planets are they aligned with your north and south node? And what that's going to show you is how potent these are going to be for you. Because there have been other eclipses this year, which I didn't get into, but there were not as potent for me. This one, These ones that I'm talking about, I when I look back at my calendar, I'm like, holy shit, these were huge points in my life and in my journey. And now it's like having the, the knowledge of it makes me very clear of like being prepared, not necessarily in my mind, but being prepared as a letting go of distractions. So in the case of the big one for me on my solar return, it's being in ceremony. For me, that is 100% aligned with the place that my soul feels the most aligned, the most uh, at home, and it has fun and it plays and it's just the most expansive that I've ever been. So And again, the fact that I am able to do that exactly on my solar return is a whole nother thing. And it all aligns with trying to really harness those energies of these points because I believe that they are here for us to grow and to move past like that level up, that thing that's been holding us back and what it's ready to release. And it's like sometimes the energies we can't release on our own. It takes the whole solar system to help move the energy and, and like transmute it into something bigger. And in each of these cases, when I look back, I'm like, yes, definitely, 100% in all of them. So I hope that this is helpful. I'm t- it's like a different take on understanding why these eclipses are important. But please take the time to especially look at the one coming up, which is November 19th. And it's at 27 degrees of Taurus. And again, if you're nodal net access is on the Scorpio Taurus axis. It's going to be a very powerful um, activation for you. And you can just, you can find out what time it will be where you are, but understanding that it's a buildup and then a ease down. It's not only on the 19th, but because the planets are all aligning on the 19th, that's the indication that it is huge. So I hope that this is helpful and I hope that you guys like to dig into this as much as I do. I'm definitely not an astrologer, but it fascinates me when you go back and you can really see how clearly these planets are talking to us and helping us. I feel like there are cheerleaders. They're here to like get us over the next hurdle. And especially if you're feeling in one of those dark nights of the soul, it's the boost that you're going to need to get over the hurdle to get you to the next point. So just allow the energies to flow through. The other day I want to talk to you um, when we were doing the energy tribe chat, we were just grounding the energy as we always do to begin with. And I had, I felt a, a sticky, like I couldn't bring the energy down past my heart center. And I used my, um, my sonic slider to do that and just held it there and let it pass. So if you guys are feeling like you have stuck energy, please use your sonic slider. The vibration just shakes it up. It's like it's making it kind of like imagine like sifting sand through a a, a, a net. It's not a full opening, but it's a at least getting the energy through and that will help you to feel secure in your body and then grounded to the earth. Um, the other thing I do want to mention is that I do, we we do the Energy Tribe chats every other Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific and 7 p.m. Eastern. But the next one falls when I will be in Maui. So we will not be having one this um, until now, November 22nd, which will be after the eclipse. 
And I want you guys to know that this month is something that feels like it's an intense energy coming. And part of me too is feeling like a retreat energy. So when that came up and I was like, hmm, should we just move it so that we can have, we'll just do one uh, every week until, you know, and I was like, no, 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 no. That's not what the energy is saying. It's slow down, slow down and let this energy really build up and be the thing that is your focus. Um, the other thing that came up in the ch chats is that people were feeling like because I post them on YouTube, they were feeling hesitant to really open up and let all of their energy flow within the group. So what we've decided is I still am recording them, but I'm, I'm making them private and I'm only sending the link to the people that are interested to watch it. So if you are in my email list, but you can't make the time, just reply to the email list and say you want the link and I'll send it to you. We have decided that we want to keep it a tighter energy, and I, I feel completely aligned with that as well. I mean, the point of these groups is to have a safe space to let it all out and to let it go and to feel safe. So as always, I would love to see you there. I love having new people's energy because it just feels like it grows and it almost like it changes a, like a solid structure into something bigger and brighter and different. And I personally, with each person, I, I don't know, I feel like they're a gift for my soul. And it's like a reflection back of the energy that I put out. So I love having that reflected back to me in your unique way. And each person brings something so different to the to the table. So I've really appreciated all of that. And I hope you guys are well. I hope that this gets you curious to start digging into your natal chart. And also, Molly does do um, classes on her website that you can go even deeper depending on how deep you want to go. But what I would say as a starting point is just look at your natal chart and see how they align and what area of your houses or your planets they're affecting because that's going to give you an indication of where the energy is trying to move for you.